So fools that we are, we've decided to come for a walk on a wet and windy day here at Charmouth. We're going to have a look for fossils and sea glass and shells and minerals and stuff. It is a very blustery, damp, rainy, windy day. But as I say, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. So we are suitably wrapped up and we're going to go for a walk on the beach. So as always, when we're walking in front of cliffs here, we've timed our visit to the falling tide. So the tide is going out at the moment, although you wouldn't necessarily know it. But we're gonna have a walk along here in front of the cliffs, see if we can find some fossils, maybe some sea glass, some nice shells. This stormy weather should stir up all of the fossils that might be buried in the sand. So we might be lucky. Now, quite apart from the churning action that these waves will have had on all of the buried sediments here and the fossils that might be underneath the sand and grit, there is another advantage to coming in these sort of conditions and that's that everything's a bit wet, which makes it much easier to see textures on things. So it should be easier to spot the fossils because they will stand out. If they're dusty or anything like that and dry, it's sometimes a bit hard to spot. But when they're damp, they're shiny, it's a lot easier to see the texture and colour of things. That's a piece of, I think that's a piece of Lime Bay agate. But we're going to make tracks in that direction, in front of the cliffs there, where things have eroded out already seeing quite a bit of sea glass here so we picked that up some lovely sea glass here actually quite a lot of it quite an abundance look at this just picked up five six pieces in one little area but I've also just found a rather lovely yellow glass bead you might be wondering where's that little doggo of ours well, she's tucked up nice and cosy at home. This is definitely not Eva weather. She would be cold and miserable and we would probably have to cut short our visit here if we brought her with us. She does not like the cold and certainly not combination of cold and wet. But yeah, this is one of the best beaches in the area I've found for sea glass. There's some really nice sort of nuggets of sea glass here. Get another one there green one and a lot of this is very likely from a lot of this sea glass is very likely from the Victorian and early 20th century dump along towards Lyme Regis which is just a little way along the coast here so there would have been lots of bottles dumped in a landfill and the landfill has washed out onto the beach. There's a piece of pottery, look. Definitely I'll take that. And some really nice coloured glass here as well. So everything I've found so far is pottery and sea glass. Haven't actually found any fossils to speak of yet, but I'm looking up here on the upper shore. Actually I see a piece of, there it goes, another piece of pottery there. That's a piece of that's a piece of Wedgwood Blue Jasper. But I'm gonna have a look down here amongst these rocks now. So this is where I might find some ammonite fossils nestled away in gaps. Maybe shark's teeth, those sorts of things. So I'll have a little rummage around here, see what I can find. I'm gonna put the camera away because I wanna put my hands in my pockets. Yeah, still, so far, no fossils to be found. And of course, this churning up business that I was talking about, of course, that can have the opposite effect. It may have churned up all of this gravel and covered up fossils that might have been visible pre previously. Still, we'll keep looking. This looks like a potentially productive spot here because I can see 
some pyrite nodules in amongst here. That, that's, those brown stones down there are pyrite nodules. As is that, that's pyrite. So is that, so is all of these greyish tan. This stuff is iron pyrite. Now you do find that where this washes up and collects, it's almost like the way gold panning works, where, where materials with the same density will settle out in the same place. And so if we turn a rock over, apart from lots of little wriggly things, this is where we might find a fossil. A little ammonite or something. Not right now though. But yeah, you can see there's a piece of pyrite where you can actually see the sparkliness of the crystals. Fool's gold. So another couple of little spots here. You can see, again, all of the pyrite has settled out in the same place. So let's have a little rummage through there. Nothing jumping out at me. Again, see all the pyrite there. All right, we'll keep looking. But I feel like today is not going to be a fossil day. But we have been quite productive on the sea glass, so never a completely wasted journey. It's quite nice actually to be out here in this weather as well. It's just. You know, very often when we come to the beach, it's a lovely day. The weather's, the sun's shining, the sea is sparkling. It's quite nice to be here when it's not like that. Jenny's actually way up ahead of me. I wonder if she's found anything. So this is another good place to look, this sort of area where everything's going to spread out, laid out flat. So if we're lucky, we might find a fossil just sitting on the top of this surface, waiting to be collected. I do see a piece of piece of brown sea glass. I was thinking that might be a, a bellum night, but it's not, it's just the edge of a pebble. Okay, first actual fossil find of the day. There's a piece of ammonite there, embedded in that piece of, I think that's blue lias or something. In fact, several bit different bits of fossils in there. There's a bit of a nautiloid ammonite there. This is a, a different one. You can really just see the imprint of it where it's filled in with minerals. I won't be taking that with me today, that's too big. Again, I'm gonna have a little look around here because again, we've got lots of pyrite here. So we might find a pyrite, a pyrotized ammonite, a loose one, if we're lucky. But this beach is so thoroughly picked over that, to be honest, we'll be quite lucky to find anything here because this is a very, very popular spot for fossil hunting, and rightly so. And so the only, you know, new fossils are weathering out of these cliffs all of the time. So there are new fossils to be found but a lot of people come here now. There's an interesting thing, look at that. So that is just a pyrite nodule, but it's got an interesting shape to it, hasn't it? I don't think that means anything. I think that is just like a, you know, that's like an imprint of a bubble, a gas cavity that was in a piece of rock and then filled in with pyrite. I shan't be taking that with me. I'll tell you what I might do is I'll just put it on top of that rock there. And somebody else might spot that. Somebody, somebody might want that. It has got a certain aesthetic charm to it, even though I don't think it's a fossil as such. I thought we might find at least one little ammonite. I can see Jenny over there. Camouflaged very well against the rocks. And she's holding something. She's got her hands up, so she's examining something she's picked up. So. 
she might be the one to find a fossil that we can take home today. That often is the case. That there, I think, is probably a section of a very large, very, very large ammonite that's filled in with chalcedony or calcite, perhaps. And again, sea glass everywhere. First actual definite fossil of the day. Got a piece of belemnite there. Not a particularly attractive piece. It's broken off at the end there, so I think I'll leave it. But I will leave it somewhere where someone else might see it, if they want it. As always, there's people chipping away at the rocks. That's what you can hear in the background. Definite fossils, possibly worth keeping. There's a probably worn bellum night or maybe crinoid stem there, but a rather nice, quite unweathered bellum night section there. Still got its quite original pointiness to it. That's definitely coming home with me. My heart did a little jump then because I thought that was a shark's tooth, but it's not, it's a piece of seaweed. Bit of bladder rack or something. Oh, there we go, another bellum night. Again, not a bad one. I think we'll take that. And you quite often, if you look around, you'll find these all in the same place. And it's not because they've come out of the same deposit. It's because the shape of it is such that it will roll and it will collect in a place where things that roll tend to collect. I won't bother with that one. There's another piece there. That might be a piece of crinoid stem, actually. Again, I shan't bother with that. Another section of bellum night there. We're obviously into a, a good area for that, so I'll have a little scout around here. But as I say, these aren't together because they came out of the same deposit, although it's possible. They are together because the, the action of the waves has collected them here. And another piece down there, another section. And another. That one I would say is almost certainly a piece of crinoid stem because it's too slender. It's too long and thin to be a bellum knight. Piece of pottery there. Uh, I don't think I'll keep that though. Oh, another bit of pottery there. I'm picking up pottery and sea glass today. That's a very, very worn, a very worn bellum night there. But we're in the right place for fossils. Jenny's holding something. What you got, Jenny? Oh, yes. That's a nice piece of pottery, isn't it? Some lovely different coloured sea glass. Do you want to put that in the same bag? Yeah. Not having a, this is not a competition today, so we'll <laughs> put it in the same bag. But yeah, there is so much of this sea glass here. There must have been a dump up on the cliffs. Colour. Yeah. It's an interesting colour too. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. So quite a lot of this stuff. And again, I think that's probably a piece of crinoid stem, not a bellum knight, just from the shape of it. It's not got any texture or pattern to it, so I'm not going to bother with that. What I would really love to find would be the, the head of a crinoid. You do find fossilised, kind of, it's like a mass of tentacles. 
I would quite like to find one of those, but I suspect we'd, we'd have to find that embedded still in the rock. A piece of pink pottery there. And the delicate pink teacup, once upon a time. But again, lots of this stuff. This is all Bellum Knight sections and crinoid stems. So you can see here there's been quite a substantial cliff fall. Big sort of slump of this muddy clay material down onto the beach. And some of this will have contained fossils and the sea will have washed through it. And again, it's worth a little rummage down here because look, we're finding again pieces of bell and night. Another bit there. And lots of pyrite in here, so you know it could be. Okay, now I saw something interesting down here. This could be, yeah, I think that might be a piece of ichthyosaur bone. It's possible. I'll take it home and give it a clean up. And in this section here, we got again loads of these bellum knights, if that's what they are. There's, oh, there's a nice one. I love that. a lot of small pieces which may or may not be as I say quite difficult to tell the difference between some of the vellum knights and some of the crinoid stems oh, a nice one quite pointy ones I'm finding today quite sort of bluntly pointy I don't want to take any more of those I've got I've got a few of them now I'm not going to collect a whole load of the same thing. But this gravel around here seems to be quite productive, so we'll have a, a further rummage. The weather is still... Well, the rain's just starting to beat down again. Oh, let's see a piece of blue sea glass there. Blue is always the treasure. Now, I didn't really come here to collect rocks, but I am going to take this one. This is a piece of Lime Bay Agate. It's a little bit weathered but you can probably just about see on camera the kind of purplish hue of this. It's got a kind of lilac hue. I'm gonna take that home. We'll slice it up and maybe put some in the rock tumbler. Not in this video, probably. Right, I think Jenny's had enough, so we're going to head back now. This is potentially one of the most productive spots here, but this stuff here, although this looks like boulders, this is actually chunks of Kimmeridge clay, possibly containing all sorts of interesting fossils, but there's no way I'm walking up on sticky clay and getting my boots all clagged up and stuff. We'll wait, for, uh, wait until the weather and the elements, when the tide comes back in, it'll wash away some of that clay and that's what exposes the fossils that are worth picking up. Of course, somebody else will probably get here before me and collect them, but that's fine. Just have a little look here on the fringes. Not seeing anything very obvious. Right, anyway, as I say, Jenny's heading off now so we're going to head off back down the beach i'm going to hand you over to studio shrimp now who's going to talk us through today's finds right it's the following day let's have a look at our finds from yesterday now i haven't cleaned these up at all yet actually so these are still a bit grimy and dirty and wet from the beach anyway let's have a quick rummage through and see what we've actually got lots and lots of sea glass obviously quite a few pieces of nice pottery some with interesting patterns or glazes. And I'm just gonna have a little sort out here and then we'll know what we're looking at. What I'll do, actually, I'll give you some close-ups of some of these as well because 
I am conscious that actually when I'm on the beach there, I often don't frame the shot properly. The GoPro is actually quite difficult to really know exactly where it's pointing. And so I find very often I'm trying to show you something and it's off the top of frame. But no matter, we can show you now in the relative calm and peace of the studio here. So that I think is a piece of crinoid stem. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. The reason I think that's different from a Bellum Knight is it's a lot longer and more slender. It might just be a very worn down one of these. This is a Bellum Knight. This is the fossil remains of a squid-like organism. So, you know, like a cuttlefish has a cuttle bone. This is a similar kind of idea. I'm not sure whether it's completely internal or whether it's external. I, I have a feeling it had a skin over it um, and obviously wouldn't have been stony like this. That's mineralization that's happened during fossilization. So, Bellum Knights, crinoid stems. I did find one somewhere. Actually, let's see if I'm good getting that. One of the crinoid stems I found. There it is, there. We'll have a look at that closely as well. So that piece is snapped in half, or split in half, and we can see a kind of central channel in there. I don't know if that's just an artifact of mineralization, whether it mineralized from the outside inwards and ended up different in the middle, or whether that's some sort of trace remains of the original anatomy. So yeah, Bellum Knight fossils and crinoid stems were the only fossils we found. Apart from this, which could be a piece of ichthyosaur bone, my reason for suspecting that is just really the, the kind of shape and texture of it. This is a piece of ichthyosaur bone that I found at Lyme Regis on a previous trip, and this has been confirmed to be a bone, a fossilised bone. And so, comparing the two, they are remarkably similar, both in sort of profile, so they've got this flattish oval shape, and in surface texture. So I think I'm like maybe 80% confident in calling that a piece of ichthyosaur bone. Apart from that, lots and lots of sea glass, including some nice, interesting colours. So this is a tiny little glass bead. I know it's glass because you do the tooth test, you tap it against your teeth, and you can tell the difference between glass and plastic. Some quite interesting colours of glass as well. So this is a sort of milky coloured glass. This might have been a Vaseline bottle or something like that. Some nice blues. You never find very much blue. It's very unusual to find large pieces of blue, uh, mainly because blue glass, not because, not because it's rare or anything, Blue glass bottles would have been relatively common, but they tended to be smaller bottles with thinner walls, poison and medicine bottles. And so they've not survived the kind of weathering process so well as some of the other colors. But yeah, there are some beautiful colors in here. There's a, there's a sort of bluish green, some aqua bluish greens, lots of very nicely rounded nuggets of sea glass. Jenny found one rather special piece. This is a piece of kind of honey coloured, put it on white background, kind of honey coloured glass there. I think this is coloured with cadmium. This is a piece of cadmium glass, I think. And you can still see this was obviously part of a cut glass or moulded to look like cut glass bowl or something like that. I think it's the rim of a bowl. And so what I might do is a little bit of a uh, little bit of magic for you and try and put that in its original context for you. This is an interesting piece of pottery. I presume that would have been perhaps the neck of a vase or something, or maybe where a handle attached to something. I suppose it could be part of a electrical fitting, part of a ceramic electrical fitting, and maybe the cable came in through here, but it looks a little bit too fine for that. And it seems to have a coloured glaze on it as well. So I tend to think that that's probably part of a part of a teapot or something that needed a hole in it for some reason. Perhaps one of those teapots where the handle wasn't actually part of the pottery. It was a, like a basket work or wire or whatever. Nice piece of striped blue and cream coloured 
pottery there. This is not Green's Cornish ware though. This is, I don't know, that might have been originally entirely blue and maybe the blue's worn off it. That could be a piece of Green's Cornish ware. Anyway, I'll have a little sift through here. I'll pick out the best pieces of pottery and I'll arrange them and take some photos. The other thing was this piece of Lime Bay agate, which by now has gone grey and pretty uninteresting. But when this is cut and polished, we should see a nice lilac sort of colour. Here's a smaller piece of it, which is more recently broken and less weathered. And if I can just show you the light shining through that, if this works, I don't know if that's going to work. Let's just try. So I don't know if you can actually see that properly, but the the light does. You can see something through that, can't you? Anyway, so that is a piece of lime bay agate. So is that. That one I brought back mainly just to show you the kind of this waxy chalcedony, which is called lime bay agate, but it's more of a chalcedony. This one, though, I'm hopeful that if we cut that to get off this weathered cortex that we'll find a nice fairly clear piece inside that I can tumble in the rock tumbler and get it really polished and smooth but that's not for this video that's going to be a different video anyway I'm gonna have a little tidy up clean up this sea glass and this is going to go into our sea glass bottle on the side the pottery I think will just go in to the same pottery that we collected at Lyme Regis the other day I have got a tentative plan for something, some sort of garden mosaic type of thing using all of this old pottery, but that's a way off because we need to collect some more. So that was quite a nice day really. Despite the blustery weather, that was a really pleasant trip to the beach actually. It's very nice to get outdoors when it's like that and it did make it feel all the nicer when we came home and had a delicious bowl of seafood stew and we enjoyed that with some lovely bread and it tasted all the better from having been outdoors in that slightly inclement weather. So time for me now to catch up with Jenny. She's disappearing off into the distance. That was our visit to Charmouth on this blustery, windy, wet March day. Home for a nice bottle of soup, I think. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.